Hello everyone, so I'm here to give the definitive answer to the question that is blowing up the internet. Which system is better, caged or three note per strings? You know what? They both suck. They both suck. No, I'm kidding, but I want to give you my view on learning the guitar neck and what is beneficial for you if you don't know anything about guitar yet or if you're stuck and want to get uh, or want to become a good improviser. Because I found many videos online talking about uh, what they call the cage system and uh, the three note per string system or the system based on pentatonic boxes and very interesting and uh, mostly because I'm not familiar with any of them and that might surprise some of you uh, maybe uh, most of the, the people that have never watched any video of mine might be wondering how do I get around the neck because I seem to be able to play around the entire guitar neck with confidence and without any problems. How do I know where the notes are? And, and that is an interesting question and uh, I want to share with you how I do it. And I think the way I do it is much easier than any of the systems I've seen so far. As far as I have found, the systems that I've found are there to teach you three things. Scales, arpeggios, and the location of certain notes. Now, I can be very quick about the first two scales and arpeggios. I've never practiced any skill or any arpeggio. And now you might say, well, but when you just played um, Cherokee, I heard many what seem to be skills in arpeggios, but, but that's the thing. I've never practiced a skill in arpeggio. I only practice lines that I think sound nice, that I want to play myself and play in my own improvisations. And those are usually not skills or arpeggios. So th that's very easy. If you are a type of player that is not interested in playing improvisations based on set skills or arpeggios, then that is not a good reason to learn the systems because obviously it is possible to improvise without knowing skills and arpeggios. And how you do that, I'll, I'll come to that. So that's the first two. Now, the third reason is to teach you the location of notes on the neck. Um, but here's, an, here's a, something you might have not realized. I don't know the location of the notes on the neck. I know the location of the notes on the low E string and the high E string, right? And I need to know that because when I want to play a chord, uh, I need to know the roots, right? I, so for B flat major seven, I need to know B flat is there. Now I also know them on the A string because there's many chords would have the roots on the A string. So I know that the D is there because this is D major seven. I need to know those notes to, to be able to play chords. Even if I want to play inversions, if I want to play A with a C sharp in the bass, I need to know where the C sharp is, why it's there. So if I have to figure out any other note, if in the rare case that I have to do, I just use octaves, so here's an A. Right? So now you might wonder, how can I play without knowing the locations of the notes on the neck? And that is because I use my own system, which I call the Van Hemert system, which I've put in a real workshop format and I've, I've taught in, in workshops around the world. And it's based on three or four positions per chord type. So for major chords and minor chords, I have three positions. One around the root, one about the third, and one around the fifth. So let's say we have G minor. <coughs> Right, the first position of G minor would be there, with my first finger on the root of the G minor chord. And the position is fluid in the sense that I can move my finger down one fret or up one fret. So it's around the root, right? Around this note. The third position is on the third. Right? There's no second position, I just call it the third position because it's on the third. And again, it's fluid. And the fifth position is on the fifth. So I need to know learn the notes of uh, 
the chords, the notes that are in the chords of both minor and major uh, triads. And I need to know the location of those notes on the low or the high E string. And um, yeah, F for dominant chords, I have four positions, one around on the third, well, uh, on the roots, one on the third, one on the fifth, and one on the seventh. So for dominant chords, I need to learn uh, all four notes of that chord. So now, this system goes for any chord. So let's say I have um, C7, so this would be fifth position, right? Oh, seventh position, first position, third position. Now, everything I want to play, I put in one of those positions. So let's say I have a G minor line, which goes like, um, let's say like this. Right, let's say I would hear that on the recording. I have no, there's no video, so I'm, I'm, I'm finding those notes. Right. Usually I write it down in a PDF, so I don't forget it. And then I'm just going to sit and find the best position to play this in. Now, in this case, it's pretty easy because it starts actually on the third. So probably the first place I want to try it is here. Right? But maybe I, I find it very difficult and I maybe try it in the fifth position. Well, I've I obviously never done that because I can't play it, but I, I got this position. So I can play this and you say, well, there's actually a G minor triad in it. It is, but I've never learned to try it. Uh, the, I just learned arpeggio, I just learned this, this line. And now I can play it on any minor chords, right? I know this is in the third position of any minor chord, so I have to play it on um, C sharp minor, I have to play it here. Right? E flat minor. Like that. And every line I find, I put in one of those positions. And I keep building my uh, vocabulary like that. And sometimes I might learn something in a position and then later I find that it's actually too difficult to play it in a real life situation, and I try to find, try the other two positions. Now, in time, more positions got added because I found some phrases that started uh, on a note or were just not convenient to play in any of the positions. For example, I found it to be very handy to be able to identify the sharp nine of a chord on the B string. Right, so I'm talking about this chord, for instance, E7 sharp nine. This is sharp nine. Because there's many phrases that I play that start there. Right, so I learned all those notes on the B string to be able. I didn't even learn all the notes, I just took a song and then there were some dominant chords, and I thought, okay, let's figure out the sharp nine in this song. Where is it? Oh, C7. So, oh, it's there. Uh, so, there. Right, like that. I didn't even learn the whole B string, just when it was necessary. Then later I found that it would be nice to be able to play the root of a minor chord with my pinky on the A string. Of course, I already knew the roots, so it was easy, let's say, because I found this shape for G minor. Give me many options to play nice lines starting there. Right, so I, I added this shape. So sometimes I add a position, but not often. I probably this is it. Right, I have those positions. I have the sharp nine. I have the 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 root stuff like that. Very easy. And now you can see that I that was not necessary for me to learn any skill arpeggio or to learn any note name or location of notes because I'm just adding lines to my vocabulary, and it's very easy to play like that because. As soon as I know the chords, I just I see all the positions of the chords on the neck, and I just play from one position to another position. And sometimes I call those those shapes. I play from one shape to one to another shape. Let's say I have to play um, uh, Sweet Victor Brown, so it starts E7. Right, so 
right there, for instance, I'm in the fifth position of E7. I have to go to A7. I'm there, I have to go to A7. What I see, I see the first position of A7, and I see on the neck the third position. So let's say I want to go to the first position. Or, or let's go to the fifth position. Right, and then I just go play a line right there that I out of my repository of lines. And now I, I move with my first finger, but sometimes I could probably move. So I, I'm still E7. And I want to go to the fifth position of A. That's E. Why did I just play some notes before it? So you'll find these things by just experimentation and a lot of uh, ex experience, of course. Of course, it's still not easy to play fast or to play nice or with a good time. That takes time, but you can skip the step of learning all these systems and uh, learning arpeggios and skills. Not necessary. Now, about right hand consistency, that's another thing. The three note per skill system is very handy because you keep having the same patterns. Well, I can see that. Uh, but if you're a gypsy jazz speaker like me, um, you kind of don't care about that. Y you have to be able to play almost any pattern uh, with the same kind of um, facility. Maybe only maybe if you have one note per string and you have to go down, maybe that's, that's a, an exception, but you can easily avoid it. So I really don't care about having consistency, uh, consistent patterns. As long as I know what pattern I'm gonna play and I practice it, and then I can play it. Um, so to end the video, I wanna point you to several resources. Maybe the first thing you could watch is the clip I just posted of a song of mine called uh, Christian's Groove and watch me play my solo. And now that you know that most, uh, most of the time my first finger is kind of moving to chord tones, you can see that that's, that first finger is kind of moving that way, right? You can see it. Now that you know, you can see it. And then I would check out my loops videos because my loops videos are about developing lines within those positions. And I give you many lines that you could use and I do mention it there in my system, but I never explain it like I did in this video. So uh, those are videos, good videos to start out. Now, if you're already an expert with caged or three note per, per string or pentatonic or whatever else is out there, I'm not saying you should forget it. Just add, you could add this little thing to uh, give you even more possibilities on the guitar neck. Now, if you are a, a beginner or if you know, don't know any system, I have good news. You don't have to learn them, right? You could still learn them, might be beneficial for like discussing stuff uh, with other people or forums or I don't know, to demonstrate playing skills, but you don't have to. You could actually go directly to my system, which is not revolutionary, uh, I think, but it might be in the scope of what is being taught on guitar. It might be a new thing. You could start there and just go to my videos, go to my loops videos and um, just learn great lines in the positions that I just gave you and start playing music immediately, skipping all the theoretical arpeggios and skills and modes and all that stuff. If you like the video, please like it. And uh, if you don't like it, then give the thumbs down, but whatever you do, subscribe. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.